Um, I did want to say to everybody too that next month for our meeting, we can have it in person. If you guys are interested, we will be offering that hybrid um, option for people, but we can meet in person for our next meeting. Should be nice to see some people face to face. Be nice to do one at um, actually one of the park locations. We used to do that. You know, we would go to like uh, the Butler Road Schoolhouse or to oh, Onanda yeah. or out to Blue Heron. Oh, um, you, great. you guys let it. me know which location and I will make sure it's available. Yeah, we ought to start doing some more of those. So um, I'm going to say we're going to go ahead. We are recording it. So if everybody else can go back in um, again, I would. Um, Stephanie might be joining us and, and again I'm not sure where Randy is so and I haven't seen I haven't heard from Lily she's what in Nashville now so um Lily is our youth member so I don't know if you've met her Lindsay or not so I have not uh, not yet so so I keep talking to Lindsay here and I don't know how many other people well Dan I guess Dan and Adeline there's no one else here to <laughs> to meet you but um Lindsay has taken over as the well the new Sam and, and yeah. you've been roped into, you were just going to be more and more HR and suddenly you're doing, uh, I think I'm now parks, parks coordinator. <laughs> yeah, more, more parks than you are HR. So I don't know if you want to just say a quick hello. It will be recorded then if, if the other members want to log on. So yeah. Hi everybody. So I'm Lindsay. I've been with the town for about three months now, started as HR, took over parks and I have fallen in love with it. Um, very brief background on myself. I worked at Target for 12 years. Um, in various leadership positions. And then um, prior to that, I worked at Amazon as HR business partner. So I come with a wealth of knowledge from leadership, um, HR, and just being able to, to lead a team. So I'm very excited to be part of the parks community and just making it as best as it can be for our residents. Welcome, glad to Welcome. meet you. Thank you, I'm glad to meet you guys too. I hear so much about everybody. <laughs> at this rate, you're gonna be on uh, roads and bridges next. <laughs> We should be plowing snow in the winter too. Yeah, that's so, right. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna wait. We don't have enough people right now to approve our minutes. To um, we don't have a quorum yet. So if we get more people, maybe at the end we can approve our our minutes from last or from our our April meeting. So um, just a quick look. You might get to the soccer game early, Lindsay. So with not many people and flying through, but um, I did get an update from Heather. I know Lindsay, you've been working pretty close mm -hmm. with Heather. Correct. Um, she's she's actually doing CPR training tonight. So um, for for some of the camp counselors. Yes, it's very important. Um, well, let's see. Pretty excited about the the restricted uh, the COVID restrictions that have been lifted. Um, so looking at more and more opportunities. I'm just reading through her email here. Uh, possibly going to the bowling alley, movie theaters, but adding back some of those you know summer camp things that they've done in the past that. That kind of got canceled last year. So more visits to Kershaw to swim and down to Ananda. So um, really, she's pretty excited about that. The other thing is, she's hoping to add more and more uh, fall and winter programs. So hopefully, if anyone does have any ideas about, you know, maybe a course and someone that would teach a course for her to get her that information, and you know, some any any sort of community rec, you know, fall or winter program. So. The other thing she did attach to her email, um, she is looking for volunteers to, they're gonna start doing some Special Olympics training in Canandaigua. So looking for people that might wanna serve as coaches for some of the Special Olympic teams, whether it's um, you know through some of the group homes or even through the school. So um, I'll, I'll attach that flyer and send that, that out if anyone's interested in that. So, but that was, I don't know, Lindsay, if you've got anything else as far as, I mean, you're, you're right in the middle of the rec programming right now and the signups and everything else, so. Yeah, no, um, everything is going super well with our rec program. Um, she is all set and ready to go. We are excited to have the kids and just have a great time this summer. They deserve it, they really do. Just a quick question. Um, we had a lot of people complaining that our parks were under underutilized this year. Um, is there a way we can just create a list of how many kids were involved or I, as people are pretty much oh, signing sure. up online right now. So can we somehow have numbers to indicate involvement? Cause I, I know everybody in this committee is well aware that our parks are pretty well utilized. So. Very well utilized. Yeah. yeah, we could definitely get some numbers. Are you referring to um, the amount of children that have 
signed up for the programs or that are on the waiting list. Yeah, I think we should somehow, you know, indicate what those numbers are and, and how many okay. days a week they're utilizing the parks. Um, and then Absolutely. I they have numbers from the check-in at Onanda too, right? They have mm -hmm. official counts. I, I think the new the new computer program is easier to track. Yeah. You and know, they've got they're gonna have rentals and everything else as well. So yeah, that new computer system that we have, um, the reporting is fantastic. We're just starting right. to um, dig into it a little bit more. Um, I have like transaction numbers, um, amounts, that sort of thing nice. already um, starting to get collected. So I'm curious to see how it's going to spike this year versus, I mean, yeah. last year was an anomaly, but um, yeah. I am keeping track. Um, but it's definitely something that we can track better to see how used at least Onanda is. But we could definitely and get I those numbers for um, the REC program. Do the lifeguards count at Butler Road at all? They do, yeah. They do, okay. So yep, yeah, yep, I, I think we just need to make matter. those, We sh maybe in the newsletter, you know, at the end of summer or something, just make that more clear to the community that, you know, just because you came at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday and there was no one there <laughs> doesn't mean that our parks aren't well utilized. Everybody so. left at 5.30. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that happens. <laughs> So Lindsay, usually what we do is, is whether it was Sarah or Sam in the past or Doug, but somebody would then kind of give us a, an overview of some of the town activities. Um, you know, just the things that we might not be aware of. Um, hot button items you think maybe everyone should know about, but I know we, we sat and talked to um, together with Doug there on Monday. I don't know if you just want me to kind of give my list and then you can fill us in on kind of the types of things yeah. we talked about, so. Yeah, that sounds good, absolutely. I think I think the biggest thing is the uh, um, if you want to give an overview of kind of the change in the park staffing. Um, yeah, so uh, we we had an opening um, for parks maintenance assistant, and we are not filling it, but instead we are hiring a we have already hired and promoted a seasonal um, full time employee to a permanent employee. So now I have two of those, um, which allowed me to also hire an additional um, part time staff member. So that way we can get some of our larger projects um, that are on our parks master plan completed this summer. Um, and that kind of segues into the next project that we are working on in July, which is for Blue Heron Park. So we're gonna be digging up the trails um, and finishing them up um, because right now they're, they're overgrown. So, and people are using it. Um, I've been out there frequently over the past couple of weeks and those trails just need better maintenance. So we're redoing the trails there. Um, we're also going to be expanding our parking lot at Blue Heron. So there's parking on both sides. Um, and then in addition to that, we are gonna make a pathway from the parking lot to the pavilion to have access from the parking lot to the trails because right now there, yeah. there isn't one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's gonna take us about a month, um, just coordinating with paving and um, there, that trail system is pretty large. Not that um, some people might know that because it's pretty overgrown at the moment, but by the end of July, people will be able to walk it and, um, you know, take their dogs there and have a, have a great time. Um, so that's as far as like what the project we're working on in the future. Um, we've done some basic maintenance leading into our rental season. So we are seeing an increase in pavilion rentals, um, the use of the parks overall. Um, so we're doing some touch-up items. So you know, fixing up paint, fixing up any broken tables that we've seen, um, adding additional seating so people can, when they come, they can enjoy, um, and just make sure that's a safe environment and a great first impression. And, and Lindsay is, and I found this interesting, you and Doug are sitting down every Thursday or every Tuesday or once once a week with, a, with yeah. really with a checklist. So correct, correct. A, lot, a lot of these projects, rather than kind of getting lost in the shuffle, it, it's a it's a scheduled weekly event. So it's, hey, where are yeah. we on the list? They, they look back at the, the master plan and, yeah. um, you know, all of those types of things at every one of their meetings and, and keep working off that list. So that's kind of yeah. a good, I think, a good focus to have as we work through the different things. So I agree. And catching me up to speed, too, on everything that's been going on this past year so we can just continue progressing and moving forward, um, especially this summer. Um, anything, Onanda, um, any big things going on there? Just kind of general catch up. Yeah, I, you know what? One, so I don't know if um, it was discussed last time, but we created a new recreational game room. Um, it was the old Nature Nest building. So all of that demolition was completed over winter. And I am happy to say that we have the two pool tables. We have a ping pong table, air hockey. We have a little toddler section, which consists of a little reading area. 
two train tables that have um, the little pieces that kids can put together and, um, and build. So we've had that open since May 28th. Um, and I am really happy to say that the feedback we've gotten from having that room open has been very positive. People like the option that if they go there and it's sunny and then all of a sudden it rains, they have somewhere where they can still do some type of activity with their families or their friends. Um, but also just to get out of the sun too, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, we also have air hockey. So and that's an air not hockey meant. For oh, go ahead. That's not just meant for campers. That's meant nope. for any any yeah. visitors to an yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it's open from the time that our rangers are there, which is from nine to nine, which is our park's operating hours um, at Onada. So it is open from nine o'clock, and we close it at nine p.m. So it's a really really great addition. Great. And we'll have to check it out. My son's yeah. graduation party is coming up um, oh, perfect. On July 10th. We're <laughs> over in Crouch Hall. So we'll have to go check it out there. Absolutely. Play place. some games of pool. Yeah. <laughs> ping pong. Yeah, it's amazing. The the other another thing that, that came up talking to Doug. Um, I know we keep going back to the Auburn Trail and, and kind of any updates from the rink all the way around to over by uh, or meeting up to the Auburn Trail at Farmington. So it seems Doug's got a lot of different things under motion with, with right of ways. And it seems the, the biggest piece right now is, is if you recall, we got uh, blocked by the county crossing County Road 30, right where the right by the Civic Center. So we got to kind of hang a right hand turn and then cut over onto the, the right of way there where the German Brothers owns the big field to get back to the berm. So Doug's doing a lot of work right there. I don't know, Lindsay, if you've got any specifics on kind of that. I don't. I know that he is frequently meeting with people um, to get this going, but I don't have I don't have specifics on on that. So, so Doug indicated. I mean, all that is still under motion. We're still, you know, it's it's, it's slowly, you know, meeting with one landowner after another, and someone has this concern about it right away, and um, in that concern, and you know, work to be done. And now there's a I got an email from Doug the other day about uh, some issues with making sure that the, um, the airport is on board with us being able to go across the end of their, I mean, we're outside the fence, but, you know, kind of going across and using their land for the trail too. There's some, suddenly there was, there were some questions from the, from the FAA or something it looked like that needed to, they wanted some, some quite answers to the, this proposed trail it looked like. So, but it is, it, it's one of those things where, I want I want to get on my bike and go you know from Outhouse Park all the way to you know to Rush but so yeah. it is it is in the works and it, it is keep moving along so um, I don't know oh, any, I, any other Mark yeah I did I forgot to mention too um, I was looking at previous uh, minutes from these meetings and I noticed that the Onada trails have been um, quite the topic of conversation so one of the first things that I did is we ordered larger um, trail markers that are, you know, more easily identifiable on the trails. And those have been put up, um, going up the trails and down. So that has been completed. Um, I also am working on getting some organizations or volunteer groups because for the trails that the town owns, I would like us to line the trails. So it's more sp specific for people um, to follow. Um, but we do have to wait for MRB um, because some of our trails we need to shift over and stuff. So we're looking at completing that in fall. And, and just just the fact, I mean, anyone that's been up there, Dan, I know you've been up there, Adeline, you've been up there, but you go along and all of a sudden is, is this the real trail or is this mm -hmm. just the trail that everybody else takes to get over to the other side? And, mm -hmm. you know, so, and we had talked to about developing a new map yeah. and, and MRB is part of this plan. Hopefully yeah. we can come up with some sort of, with a better map other than, seems like the map, the current map is like a hand-drawn map that was a, a school project 40 years ago or something so it was it was if you look at that brochure it, it says so <laughs> so yeah we're going to be working on updating that too so it is definitely on, on the forefront of my mind because a lot of people do want to use those trails Lindsay, do you know anything about i mean i know when you look at google maps uh, take for example the uh the the bristol mountain um trail runs they're right on google maps as a trail okay I don't know, is there a way to specifically post? I don't know if that's something you would know anything about. If there's a way to specifically indicate where the trail system is through I will, something like Google Maps. I will do some research, Adeline, and um, 
I can get I can get back to you on that. I'll do some research and see if I mean that would be a great option for us. Yeah, for all of our trails, really. Yeah. I mean, that, and I think it would indicate clearly, you know, if people are using the layers in their in their mapping software, they can see clearly where all the trails would be in the town. Then, so yeah, that would be a great. I think that would be a great resource. I'll start looking into that. Lindsay, I'll jump over a little bit. I'll go um, down the inclusive playground. So that's that's kind of the end of our agenda, but I know that you've yeah. been involved in what's going on there and, and Doug's had meetings with with Mike and everything else. I don't know if you want to give us an update on. Yeah, so I mean, we, we had our groundbreaking ceremony um, last month and that went really well. And our highway department has been working on all that underground work, which is a pretty large project with the water and getting everything level. Um, but things are good. The equipment has been purchased. Um, we're still waiting on a couple um, donations for the project, um, but it, it's all underway. I know Doug has a couple meetings with some other people to see if we can get some more money towards it, but it's, it's going really well. We're very excited about it. And, and they're looking to have a big, they're going to use a week. They're hoping in like the last full week of, April, or, uh, of August to, they're trying to pull together different community groups and yeah. uh, different yeah, people to come to in and, and actually start installing the equipment and have things. Yeah, you know, so it started it as like one day, as yeah. like a one day thing and it's turning into a week long, I would call it like a building celebration um, because so many organizations are involved in it and it is such a big deal. Um, so that is gonna be a, a week long um, project um, if anyone's interested in volunteering with that too. So any any other things that we that we've missed that are going on with the town? Um, nope, nope, that covered a lot of that. Um, we already covered most of the things that we are working on. Um, like I said, the big project that's coming up is gonna take us through July and then we're gonna move forward on our next um, set of projects that we have coming up. I just have one other question um, yeah. that I, I'd love a follow up on, obviously sure. don't expect an answer, but um, there was a proposed park um, for the RSM development, Johnson Road property that would go out near uh, German Brothers Marina. I don't know if you're even familiar with that at this point, but um, it was kind of looped in with the whole Tishner Point project. I'd just like an update, maybe in our next park meeting about what's going on with that and if that's still in the works and where we are. Doug, Doug mentioned that Monday that it's, it's not completely dead, but yeah. I don't think the developer in, in the town are on the same page. So as far as, um, it, it seems maybe they, they were, were looking for the town to do a little more than, um, than the town is willing to do to, to get that, to acquire that piece. So, but not completely dead. It seems like maybe there have been some, some follow-up discussions, but you know, nothing, really nothing formal, so. I just know I've, I've encountered a lot of people that have asked me about it and looking for updates on it and what's going on with that. So it's definitely something that people are still talking about out there, so. Um, the next thing on our agenda is our concert food truck night. So um, I was hoping Dave would be here. He, he got called off to a work meeting, but um, we're, I, I sent out an email there a couple of weeks ago. We're, we're really, we're in pretty good shape. Um, we've, we've got, well, we, we Dave did send me an email today. He's still trying to make sure he's got the right, um, the macaroni, macaroni food truck. Um, they haven't 100% committed yet. So he's back and forth with them still a little bit, but um, the Mike Yaki trio is all set. We're gonna have a little stage for them. Uh, food, two food trucks, hopefully the ice cream truck, come in, carry a chair, sit on the lawn, bring a blanket, listen to the music. So, um, Really, I, I think our only role we, we've really identified is maybe a little bit of parking coordination. Um, what do you need from us? I mean, so, how can we help? Well, we parking coordination. So, okay. um, you know, it, it'll be watching the parking lot maybe to see if it's getting filled up. And, um, you know, are we going to set up an overflow like we did for movie night on the soccer field? And so, but other than that, I, I think that the feeling is people might, instead of the movie night where they came and they wait, waited the whole time, people might come and stop and eat at a food truck and listen to the music for a little while and, you know, come and go a little more than what the, the movie night was. So, so we'll see, we'll see how it works out. So. Sign me a job, Mark. Yeah, we'll do. Me too. We'll do. Head Parkers. 
So, but <laughs> do I, I get I, a vest? I'm going to want a we, vest now. I'm sure Doug can find a vest. So. I want two big flags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but so I mean, that's just make sure that you know July 20th is on your calendar, and mm -hmm. and it's really taking care of itself. So I think we're in pretty good shape. So, um, next senior activities, and I got an email today from Karen, um, Lindsay. You're going to meet with the, the director. Is Doug sneaking into the room and bugging you? <laughs> oh. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we are going to partner with them. Um, I have a meeting with Karen and a couple other people coming up on July 1st to go over what that adult recreation program um, will look like and potentially some future events and partnerships. And I know that a lot of people are very excited about that, especially um, due to COVID last year, a lot of things mm -hmm. kind of kind of died out. So I'm excited to um, to be a part of that and get it up and running again. And I do think that's going to be an amazing partnership if we can, um, you know, form that relationship. So we're going to have a little bit of coffee and a lot of conversation and get this going. Karen will be very happy. So, well, good. Thank you. Um, we keep coming back to the, these QR codes. Um, Dan, I've, I've been back and forth with more printing. They had told you they don't make signs like that. And then they told me they could order signs out okay. with, the, with the QR codes. So mm. I called back and the, the woman that I, that I originally talked to wasn't there. So I, I'm trying to play a little bit of phone tag. But I think our biggest thing, and do we have a set um, URL or a, a set address yet that we know we can generate a code from? Yeah, for the I have a... I have a list right here. I'll send it to you after this email. And I know Sarah was going to try to see if she could match up and, and maybe get Google to recognize some of these. And I don't know if she's had the opportunity to do any of that. I don't know if Lindsay, you could touch base with her in the office or something. Or I know she was working on it. We were talking about it this week, um, but I'll, I'll follow up. What, what do you mean by that, Mark? Well, remember, we weren't able to take ownership of Onanda oh, on, oh, on oh. the Google and and you apparently you you own do you own miller park or do you which park do you own i transferred that uh samantha i think she okay you know under the town uh email address or something like that so she, yeah well, we're 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 good on that okay yeah. but those codes that you have dan are the ones that we could we could get those ones out and use those codes as is the printed ones if we can get a firm thing from from more printing yeah, it lands you right on this page for, you know, that park. And so okay. it's just, if from there you can, you know, take, get directions or you can, you know, click the review button and start typing. If, you know, assuming that you're logged in under your Google account, which most people are. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Okay, so we'll keep, we'll keep plugging along. If Sarah's got any, any update on that, there's stuff. So... Um, hey, thanks. Hi, Stephanie. Good to see you. Hi, Stephanie. It said, hi, it said you were going to let me in. It was 20 minutes ago. No kidding. <laughs> congratulations, Adeline. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Stephanie, this, you see Lindsay, Lindsay's the new, uh, she's taken Sam's role. She's the new HR person, but she's also inherited um, everything to do with Parks and Rec, so happily She's, inherited yeah. <laughs> it seems so. like a perfect fit hr knowing HR the people Park. here and parks and rec it probably makes sense <laughs> it does it does <laughs> parks has a large staff so mark it is key for uh the town to get you know the the ownership of those parks because you do get once you do have that you get a lot more access to data and you get like a monthly report or do you get well, yep. you got that when, when you owned Miller Park, right? right. Every, you can get a report sent right to you. You get a report, oh. how many people bring it up on Google, and then you may even get how many people visit by, you know, geolocation. Okay. Um, so I know we're having trouble with Onanda, so that is something that I'm working on. We can do it by a video conference, so I just have to touch base with some person at Google um, and basically do a FaceTime call to prove that I am who I am and this is our park. Um, so we are working on owning owning the Google for Onanda. Awesome. So Dan, I'll keep I'll keep 
contacting more printing and figure out we'll, we'll get those codes and they said they could mock up a you know a, a what it would look like before they sent it out and so yeah. i think three would be good at a nine to one at the gate by the house there uh, you know by the where the gate person sits and then one down by the water they would the display down there and then maybe one on the upland side somewhere yeah that would be good yeah so yeah so we'll touch base maybe we'll take an afternoon we'll go swing around and hit the two or three parks and, and come up with yeah. some ideas so Sounds good. But, um so we went over we went over inclusive playground update mm -hmm. um i didn't really have any other others on there oh you know what talking about onanda though that that reminds me there had been sarah had mentioned um the environmental committee and maybe one other committee was was looking to update the the bulletin board at the bottom of of the the trail there at onanda there's that big bulletin board with really hasn't been updated in years and years and years so um i think it would be awesome anything that that you know environmental and i can't remember the other committee that that was interested in doing something but i think anything that, that might have been historic preservation do, what's that might have been historic preservation. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was. Maybe it was. But and then even, you know, if we do generate a new map, I think that would be a perfect spot to post a, you know, a great big map that showed all the trails and, um, you know, had, that would be a great spot for something like that. So, Lindsay, if that comes up with anybody, tell them sure. Whatever, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> be very happy with with any updated bulletin board there. I am. I would be very happy with any so, updated board. <laughs> well, that, that's another. I was down there the other day and some of the drawings, the names are kids that I had in school about 25 years ago. So that's how long those uh, those pictures have been up there. So the historic one, preservation. The one down by the lake could get updated a little too. That's got some pretty old pictures. My house is in one of those pictures and it's probably 20 years old. You know, it'd be nice too, but if we did something on the one by the lake is to have something in there about um, how to clean your boat off and such for reducing the uh, harmful algal blooms and everything. Cause that's been the topic that's come up of late too. So, and they do have the boat, you know, launched there in the off season, so. We do. Anything else, anybody got any other I have a question. Does maybe I don't know if you know, but is there a any update on like how the gypsy moths are treating the parks? I know that they spray them, but I know. do. So I've been um, obviously I don't know that quite a bit. I hit the parks around I don't know three to four times a week. Um, so I was there in the beginning. The gypsy moths were crazy down at Onanda, um, and since the spraying, I our foliage is holding up well. Um, on the hillside, but also surprisingly lakeside. Um, they didn't spray lakeside. They just did the uplands. Um, and we've noticed a significant difference since they sprayed, oh, which is great. Boy, there's some spots around where you look right now. It's, it's, yeah. oh, holy cow. Yep. So. Well, Dan, I'm sure you, it's got to be bad by you because I know the Lakewood Meadows Forest, it sounds like it's raining out there from yeah. the, the, feces coming down from yep. the caterpillars it's off all, all down acorn hill like that yeah. i got one tree stripped there i fell awful <clears throat> so any other items that anyone has come up with you don't want to end the meeting on on gypsy moth poop <laughs> <laughs> well the next best thing is is with stephanie here now we can approve the minutes from our last Yay! meeting we can get those put on now that there's four of us so but Stephanie's saying, I, just, I rushed to get on this meeting and now it's over. No, that's all right. I just wanted you to know, Mark, I don't think I told you this, but I'm more than happy to help with the uh, concert thing. Oh, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So whatever you need, just let me know. Yeah. So July 20th. Yeah. Um, and again, we're, we're kind of finalizing everything, a, a couple little tweaks right now, and then we're good to go. So, yep. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Whatever you need. Cool. So. Um, is so, somebody bringing, by the way, like a first aid kit or something like that? Maybe, I mean, from the town, maybe we should have something like that there. For so we, we do have um, a fully stocked first aid kit over at oh. Outhouse Hall. In, um, oh, good, good. But yeah, if we need anything additional, we can we can obviously bring more. If we yeah, that'll be open for the bathroom and everything then too. So great. 
So did everyone get a chance to look through those minutes from our last meeting? Yep. yep. So if someone wanted to make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from last month's meeting. <laughs> I'll second. So now we now I can, and, and I learned my lesson. Sarah taught me, she goes, if you have those minutes just sitting there in an email already attached, that when they're approved, then it's not two months later that I remember to send them. So I'm going to hit that. And I don't know, Lindsay, if you want me to send those to you now to, to get posted or they can still go to Sarah or it doesn't really um, matter. I mean, for now, if you want to just share them with both of us and then I'm sure she'll teach me how to do that. Okay. So I, I hit, I hit send. So she has the, uh, um, she has, and when you see her tomorrow, I'll say, Hey, how do I post these minutes that Mark sent? So we'll do, <laughs> but so Lindsay, this is one of the quickest meetings. I want you to know that. So I don't know if it's because you just got through everything so quick or what it was, but that's definitely Lindsay. I'll come to her with more next time. Good job. Good job. <laughs> well, I guess I get to go make dinner then. So Yay. Um, well, thanks, guys. We're done, so. Thank you. Have fun at soccer, Thank Lindsay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks everybody. Dan, I'll be in touch too, and we'll we'll hammer out those QR code things. So I'm good. Okay. Sounds good, everybody. We'll see you. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye.